So everyone it is books and looks tv so i have talked about colorism and i have talked about featurism and today i'm going to talk about texturism because i believe it is an important discussion um texturism will be used interchangeably with good hair but before i get into all of that make sure y'all support my channel by simply liking commenting and subscribing my goal is to reach 500 so i can get a community tab and be able to better engage with my subscribers so let's get into this topic the Tigran laws were basically created in Louisiana to coerce black women into hiding their hair. While many black women, especially mulatto women, could roam freely, their hair often enticed white men, or it was at least believed by white women that black women's hair had some type of magic or hold on white men, which is possible because I don't know if y'all know or have experiences, but a lot of white men will stop dead in their tracks as some 4C hair or any natural hair. But, you know, often they're mesmerized. And like I've even caught white men sniffing my hair or like saying, oh, your hair smells so good. It smells like shea butter, all that crazy stuff. So that insecurity from white women did have a lot of push into the Tigran laws because they were afraid that their men were going to be wrapped up in some black woman's arm. But anyway, since black women naturally make anything look good, despite this laws, we we used our church hats or our hair scarves and we still made them fashionable pieces. And to this day, if you in the South, you know, a black woman's church hat is a big deal. Like women would spend a lot of money on the decorations, how big it is. It's like it's a big deal you know, looking marvelous, looking beautiful. And so we found ways to still make ourselves look good, basically. So ironically, even to this day, if your hair isn't done, we will wear a hair covering. So basically in the USA, good hair is considered to be hair that is wavy or straight in texture, soft to the touch, has the ability to grow long. And it requires minimal intervention by way of treatments or products to be considered beautiful as cited by the Perception Institute. So basically, good hair can be interchangeably used to explain texturism. In Black America, many Black women will do almost anything to preserve the image of good hair, whether it be a texturizer uh, straightening your hair or even wearing like a wavy curly wig with a different texture of your own and in my opinion this has been conditioned since childhood see many people see uncombed hair as bad hair especially if it's in its natural state now me i'm from the bible belt the south i was raised in memphis tennessee in the 90s if there was any big event, I knew that nine times out of ten, I had to sit down in the chair and hold my ear because it's hot. And I know like just thinking about you having a grade of hair sounds really crazy. But that brings me to my next point, the hair type chart. So Andre Walker was Oprah's hairstylist and he would be the first person to formally categorize hair types. Again, the looser your hair type is, the better you are usually perceived. Now, this has its pros and cons, as many people believe that they can better take care of their hair by understanding their hair type. A lot of it also leaves a lot of people insecure. So imagine if you're a black woman with 4C hair, you literally just wash, condition and styles your hair and you style your hair and someone say, girl, didn't you comb your hair? Because, you know, 4C hair happens to be like the tightest, coolest hair. And you get frustrated and you even blush and you like, I did. Now, somebody is either going to respond in a disrespectful manner 
or you're probably going to end up defensive or just suppress your hair in general. So this constant discussion of texturism has socialized many black women to be insecure. Whether it's a kitty relaxer or straightening tools, the main point is hide your kitchen. Perfect hair has hindered black women from things such as swimming or exercise out of the fear of not maintaining their natural hair or even an expensive weave. The issue of texturism, even some heterosexual men have complained that they feel they can't be very intimate with the woman if her hair is done. But ironically, these same men often shame women if they don't have their preferred hair texture or hairstyle in the first place. So a lot of women are just like, who cares about men, right? <laughs> so anyways, you can see texturism is pretty much a big deal. Now, while the Tiger Laws existed hundreds of years ago, it took it took damn near hundreds of years for a law to be passed to actually end it. And that comes up with the recent law, the Crown Act. The Crown Act literally was just passed by the House of Representatives. The Crown Act basically stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. And it prohibits racial discrimination based on hair texture and protective styles. In my opinion, this can be deemed as a relief for many black women because often we contemplate how we should wear our hair for an interview. Like literally, I, when I was a teenager, I was like one of the few people natural and I had a job interview and my cousin who happens to like put white, who happens to put non-black women on a pedestal and I didn't notice that at the time, but he critiqued the hell out of my hair. He was like, your hair nappy, you used to do something with your hair. And a lot of people, they were like, oh you you trying to do the natural thing or some of them didn't even know what to say because their language did exist and so even though I, like i felt my hair was beautiful i wondered like would a white interviewer or someone you know just see that i'm unprofessional or not try to look at my skills or talents so i relaxed my hair out of fear that i wouldn't get hired off that alone and natural hair education wasn't it wasn't very accessible and beauty shops were not yet prevalent. So y'all said, cause even though I relaxed my hair, I still didn't get the job and I was so mad, but it's cool. I had I just cut off all my hair afterwards and I'm like, I'm never changing who I am again to be accepted, especially at a job, right? So aside from interviews, some of us get inside the workplace and we still have to hear scrutiny or an opinion from Tom. For instance, you can be minding a black business, ready to eat your little lunch, and you walk by and you hear, oh my gosh, Tasha, your hair is getting so long. Or my favorite, love the new hair, like, bro, get your ass on. But yeah, there has been large avenues of information now, like YouTube, books, and even um, natural hair courses, and just courses in general that tell us how we should appreciate our hair. And there are even salons and hair, hair certificates that focus on the black hair and maintaining it. Yet there is still a beauty standard and preference as the men say and living in that kind of world may make you always a bit weary of your hair texture and that's all i have to say about this topic let me know what you think in the comments and thank you for watching books and looks tv